ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q1 fy24 earnings conference call of jammu and kashmir bank hosted by icici securities as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr chintan shah from icici securities thank you and over to you oh uh, yeah uh, thank you yashasvi uh, good morning everyone present on the call and thank you for being on the call uh, this is chintan shah from icici securities i welcome you all to the q1 fy24 results conference call for jammu and kashmir bank uh we have with us from the management mr baldev prakash managing director and ceo along with the uh, management team uh, so without further delay i would like to now hand over the call over to the management for their opening remarks followed by a q and a uh, thank you and over to you sir thank you chintan a very good morning and warm welcome to all the participants the indian economy seems to have carried the momentum from past year into the current fiscal and there has been no evidence by far that suggests a slowdown in the current financial year 2023-24 india ended the financial year 23 on a strong note as per provisional estimates released by the nso recently stating the real gdp growth of 22-23 stood at 7.2% higher than 7% as was projected earlier the gst collections have been robust and the services sector recording decade high expansion during the first two months of current fiscal however owing to global concerns exports and exports are struggling food inflation pushed the inflation higher in june monsoon remains a key factor till weather conditions normalize for 22 for 23 24 the central government sees growth at about 6.5% as per s&p global rating india is poised to be the fastest growing economy for the next 3 years estimating it to grow at 6.7% to 6% in 23 24 and 6.9% in succeeding 2 years the growth is driven primarily by strength of the domestic demand stock market has witnessed a prolonged bull run with the sensex even crossing the 67000 mark supported by strong fii inflows according to the imf manufacturing is showing weakness across g20 economies and global trade remains weak but the demand for services is strong particularly where tourism is recovering the imf did not indicate any change to its april 23 global gdp growth forecast of 2.8% down from 3.4% in 22 2022 but said that risks were mostly tied tilted to the downside including intensifying russia's war in ukraine stuff for inflation and more financial sector stress that could disrupt markets first quarter global growth slightly outpaced projections in its april forecast but data since then has shown a, a mixed picture with pockets of resilience along with signs of slowing momentum coming to jnk and latar the uts have witnessed profound ameliorative affirmative and progressive changes in the last 4 years in compensating its entire governance including development activities public administration and security matters which are positively impacting every aspect of economic and social well-being the tourism industry has witnessed rapid improvement as jnk saw a record 1.9 crore footfall in the calendar year 22 and over 80 lakhs people have already visited the ut during the first half of this year and the total tourist arrivals for year 23 is expected to cross 2 lakh 2 crores tourism has a cascading impact 
on multiple allied sectors like hotels, restaurants, houseboats, taxi, shikara operators, homestays, handicrafts, dry goods, small businesses, etc. Other sectors of the economy are also getting the push from infrastructure development, which has also improved the accessibility by providing all weather connectivity. Banks across board have continued with good run of financial results in Q1 of financial year on the back of robust growth numbers. Due to inflation concerns owing to high food prices, RBI may not reduce the policy rates in the near term and the decision will largely hinge on global developments and moderation of weather conditions in the economy, in the country. Continuing with the sustained improvement in financial parameters, the bank has delivered another set of good quarterly numbers for June 23. What is discernible in the Q1 numbers is manifest in the growth in core revenue numbers, the interest income and the fee income. Year-on-year -year increase of 26% in interest income, 24% in NII, 12% in non-interest income has contributed to 38% increase in operating profit compared to corresponding quarter of finance, previous financial year. On the sequential basis also there is marked improvement in pre-provisioning operating profit that is PPOP by 17%. YUI growth in advances at 17% and sequential 3% on Q and Q basis is at par with the industry. Deposits growth at 8% YOI is lower than the industry. On sequential basis, June, that is June over March, decline in deposits has been a trend with the bank owing to movement of government funds, which usually remain at the peak during March quarter. The bank had surplus liquidity part of, of which was leveraged to support the credit growth. Owing to the existing interest rates differential, there has been some internal cannibalization of deposits, a shift from CASA towards SUM. Though most of our saving deposits accounts have exhibited inelastic character over sustained periods. Despite this slight shift, which is an industry phenomenon, our bank is maintaining a CASA ratio of 53.29%. In advances, while corporate loans at 17% percent and personal loans at 15 percent contribute majorly to the YUI growth. It has been the personal finance segment which has majorly contributed to Q and Q growth numbers. In the personal segment, housing loans have grown at over 20 percent on YUI and 4.5 percent on Q and Q basis. In order to address shortfall in PSL sub-segment, bank got over 44,000 eligible loan accounts, aggregating to over 2,000 crores Uttam registered during the quarter to improve performance under MSME lending. The sustained improvement on in yield on advances and yield on investment has resulted in NIM of 3.98% for the June quarter. Improvement in the yield on investment is a result of reinvestment of short-term securities acquired during low interest rate regime at better yields. There is, there is further scope of improvement in these yields as we still have significant amount of redemptions of low yielding investment happening in the ensuing periods. With the adoption of centralized processing for account opening, loan appraisal of personal, that is consumption and consumer loans, etc., including STP model, for government employees, per employee productivity and profitability, and resultant efficiency ratios are gradually improving. The cost to income ratio has moderated to 65.07% from 69.17% in corresponding period in financial year 2023, and 68.24% in March 2023 quarter. With better leveraging of technology, our intermediation costs, that is cost to serve, are bound to go down significantly. Plus, we have a significant number of high cost employees scheduled to retire over the next three to four years. Coming to assets quality, we have further reduced our gross NPA and net NPA ratios 
to 5.7% and 1.39% respectively. And we are on course to achieve the year-end target of 4.5% of gross NPA. Provision coverage, we have increased to 87.55%. Recovery during the quarter was somewhat muted, but the highlights of the quarter is controlled slippages. After witnessing our elevated slippages last year due to some technical issues, our slippage ratio has been below 1.5% annualized during the June quarter. The restructured loan book is performing satisfactorily and it has reduced by over 240 crores during the current quarter and the trend for reducing it further shall continue. On the credit cost front, 26% 26 basis point during Q1, we are confident to keep it to the bare minimum owing to the controlled slippages, high PCR, which reduces our aging provision requirement and expected right backs on account of recoveries. We foresee adequate internal accruals during the year, which are expected to suffice our CT1 capital requirements. However, we have an enabling board approvals for raising of capital, which we may consider utilizing at appropriate time and price. If need be, there will be more clarity regarding this going forward, maybe after Q3, based on the trend of CAT. The capital adequacy ratio of 14.83% as on June 23 is without reckoning the quarterly profit and amount mobilized under ESPS 2023. Once again, I thank you all and acknowledge your guidance, support, and trust, and, and be expected to continue in the coming days. I will be glad to have your questions now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Vivek from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir, and congratulations on another good quarter. My question is around your expansion plans, especially in your uh, loan book as well as your deposit base. If you split it into your core state business and union territory business and outside of and the rest of India business, what would be the proportion that you target in both corporate loans as well as retail loans and in deposits? Uh, so if, if you look at the bank a year from now or a couple of years from now, what are the proportions that you would have so that you can maintain healthy credit quality as well as deposit base? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Vivek. Good question. And uh, uh, as far as expansion plan is concerned, uh, uh, we have uh, already uh, approved 20 branches, around 20 branches in the rest of country, uh, particularly those, those places where very good potential exists for the business and uh, where we do not have the existing presence. The focus will be based uh, in, in these areas will be mainly on liabilities, but there will be a, a, a expectations uh, from these branches to grow the quality business in loans also, particularly the retail part, that is home loans home loans or educational loans or auto loans, etc. As far as the rest of India business proportion is concerned, uh, you might have uh, observed this in the last year that the rest of country business contribution is going up. We ended by 32 percent. Uh, this year also we are expecting to work on the same strategy. Hopefully uh, we should be reaching to around 35 percent this year. The overall, I think, and the uh, medium term, uh, we expect a, a percentage of rest of India business uh, uh, in the range of around 40%. Uh, 
and uh, as far as the uh, the business of the the type of business is concerned uh, rest of india our focus remains on the good corporates and the government corporations and uh, now this year the shift is towards home loans of to uh, improve our home loan book in the rest of country also besides in our home territories so thank you very much that was very clear um, just on that uh, you know when you expand the cost income ratio would be at around current levels no sir i mean or is there any scope for improvement there that's my last question thank you yes so cost to income ratio we are uh, see, this is mainly contributed by the staff cost so uh, staff cost as i have indicated uh, will be uh, little bit rigidity is there but that is being addressed in a very effective manner as i have told in my opening remark the high cost employees are getting retired now and uh, the new employees will have only one third of the cost so uh, overall with the expansion plan cost to income ratio is not going to be impacted significantly and then we are leveraging the technology also so thank you very much and wish you good luck thank you very much thank you we have a next question from the line of deepak poddar from sapphire capital please go ahead hello am i audible sir yes deepak good morning yeah good morning sir and thank you very much uh, sir for the taking my uh, for for taking my uh, queries uh, sir just first up i wanted to touch upon the cost to income part i think Um, on an annual basis we have in uh, we have guided that uh, around 60% is the cost to income that uh, we would look at for fy24 so is there any change to, to that because currently we are at 65% and based on your uh, commentary also i think it looks like the cost to me, cost to income ratio uh, is not likely to go down right uh, no uh, deepak we are confident to meet the guidance there has been a lot of uh, steps which we have taken uh if you might have observed uh, this cross selling income has seen a good uptick because of our new tie ups with the uh, with the third party players mm -hmm. then our treasury income has also seen a, a, a improvement improving trend this uh, this quarter then technical right off we are expecting a good recovery which will be obviously uh, impactive positively the cost to income ratio mm -hmm. and around 1500 employees are getting retired in next 3 years 3 to 4 years and these are all high value uh, high cost employees so uh, all these factors i'm sure uh, this year we should be meeting the guidance and going forward the improvement will be more significant so so uh, so what you're saying is that the 60% cost income this year is still a likelihood right yes yes we will make it happen okay i understood uh, fair enough and uh, secondly sir i wanted to understand now in your opening remark uh, in, in one of the recent interviews you had mentioned that uh, we are confident of achieving 4000 crores in profit over next 4 years so 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 just wanted to understand what um, i mean uh, what do you mean by this statement actually i mean uh, this 4000 crores is uh, in terms of annual profit that you are looking to achieve over next 4 years is that what we are trying to do here Yes. So uh, by FY28, financial year 2028, mm -hmm. uh, we have a target of 4,000 crores of profit and uh, 5 lakh crores of business. So in in uh, it, it is uh, around three times of the profit which we have uh, generated in the in the last year, to, uh, 2023. So given the 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 factors which are uh, including the growth. Uh, business growth as well as the the income streams the uh, the uh, uh, i mean the steps taken for improving the cost to income ratio i'm pretty confident that we will be able to achieve that uh, level of 4000 crores of profit okay okay and 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 what sort of uh, i mean growth we are assuming in this uh, year i mean next uh, by fy20 what sort of cagr growth we are looking at uh, when we are when we are factoring in uh, 4000 crores of profit so our uh, uh, around 15 to 16% definitely we will be achieving this year uh, as far as the credit growth is concerned and uh, over a period of time it will be in the in, in, in the range of around 16% uh, hopefully and we will be able to do that 
Understand. And, and, and sir, my final question is on your ROA. Uh, so what, what's the aspirational ROA we are looking at for our kind of business? See, we are touching around one now, as of now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that is where I think we are looking for one plus. We want to maintain it one plus, around one, one plus. Fair enough. I, I, I got it. Uh, that's very clear, sir. And uh, all the very best, sir. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rishikesh Oza from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much, Shreddy. Uh, my question is respect to the... Uh, sir, sorry, can you use your handset mode, please? Your voice is breaking. No, it is still not clear. Wait, let me go to the video, please. <coughs> Hi, am I audible now? Yes, please go ahead. Oh, yeah. My first question is to the wage progression that we have taken. So, was this a one off item or this is expected to continue? Yes, can you please repeat your question? Sure. So, we have taken a 112th progression this quarter. So, is this a one-off item or we expect this to continue for a few quarters going ahead? 112, what, what is 112? So, I'm talking about the wage provisions that we have taken. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, see, the uh, salary is for the employees is due from November 2022. Revision. Okay, so the salary revision from uh, IDA. So for that, we are making a provision every quarter. This is also part of that provision only. There is no uh, I mean, special provision for other things. So is, are we expecting this to continue for the coming few quarters too? Yes, every quarter we are making it uh, because that uh, uh, salary division is maybe happening next year or any time. So till that time, this provision we will be continuing making it. Okay. Okay. And so, what are the gross slippages for this quarter? Uh, so, that you have the number? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, good morning, dear. Good morning. I'm Shujad. The gross slippages is, uh, is uh, on an analyzed basis this quarter is below 1.5%. It is 283 crores during this quarter. Okay. So, I think it is significantly lesser than what we were seeing in the past few quarters. So, do we stick to a, you know, guidance in Q1 that you had indicated that credit cost will be, you know, zero for FI24? Yes, uh, uh, mostly during this this quarter, it will be around uh, less than zero. And maybe in the third and fourth quarter, let us see. Uh, but definitely it will be below 1%. Okay. 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 And, uh, okay, so with respect to the credit cost will be less, and I think if OPEX also trends down towards 60% cost to income. So, fair to say from Q2 onwards, you can see, you know, 400 to 450 crores plus of uh, profit. Let us see, but uh, we are confident that we will be, uh, I mean, keeping this trend of, uh, uh, I mean, growth, growth both in business as well as in the profitability. Okay, okay, that was helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rishikesh. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Manish Ostwal from Nirmal Bank Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I'll late the call uh, slightly late. So can you, uh, you know, start your comment about the JNK state economy and how, how the credit and demand environment in the, uh, in the state? Uh, MP, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good morning, Manish. Uh, yeah. See, as I have uh, I referred in my opening remarks, the state has seen a renewed interest from various angles from the development uh, activities. Now, the the environment, the the uh, business environment in the union territory is improving a lot, and which is driven mainly by tourism. Last year, the state has uh, the union territory has recorded around 1.9 crores in uh, footfall. And this year, the, the, it will be definitely going more than two crores. And the G20 meeting has uh, actually improved the sentiments further. And this 
the type of uh, i mean activities is supporting all the small small activities including hotels and restaurants and including the taxi operators the small handicraft and shikar right this shikar operators etc over and above uh, maybe early part of the next year uh, next calendar year we will be having the rail connectivity with uh, 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 right up to baramula i mean a uh, lot of improvements we are seeing on ground happening in in the union territory of j and k and this is the right time to get invested in 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 the state and j and k bank is the best instrument for that and this is the second question on your growth on growth in the business so uh, advances growth at 17% and the deposit growth 8% actually deposit the base has declined on quarter to quarter basis by 1% so and the cd ratio around 69% so because of our cd ratio is low that's why we are growing the deposit slowly or uh, or any competitive pressure we are seeing in the market uh, why the deposit base declined quarter to quarter and why is it low compared to the loan growth on a yoy basis yes so as uh, manish i have uh, referred in my opening remarks also this has been a trend which has been curtailed significantly this quarter because uh, particularly because of the government deposits which generally peak in in the month of march so the first quarter they again utilize those funds and then first quarter it goes down but if you see now going forward uh, besides of course the government deposit will start coming and plus Uh, there will be uh, a, a fresh accretion in the retail deposit which will be happening because of our uh, lot of steps we have taken including that the the, uh, the digital initiatives uh, which we are providing to our customers so i am sure that this quarter you will see a good improvement in the deposits also but on because of the historical reasons this quarter has been subdued as far as the overall deposits are concerned right so uh, yeah money so i just want to add 1.3 lakh same bank account we have opened in this quarter and this is a, a historic actually the, the, we have been very active and moving uh, all the branches are moving out and proactively opening these accounts so this will definitely change the entire perspective of the deposit going forward right sir and uh, on the capital raise plan you said the quarter 3 and quarter 4 will be raising the capital so what could be the size of the capital raise whenever it happens so as of now we have the approval of uh, 750 crores for ct1 and uh, 1000 crores for tier 2 uh, but uh, we uh, tier 2 of course we, we should be raising in the third quarter but for ct1 we will take a call uh, after third quarter only so uh, maybe after uh, uh, maybe after january maybe in the month of january we will take a call and lastly sir uh, in your technological initiative you talk on your commentary but uh, if it is better uh, to put certain uh, per, uh, you know moving parts in like of like of transaction happening through digital channel versus visa vis branch network it will be it should be part of the presentation so that we can compare with other banks how the jnk bank is performing on those parameters with the other banks it will be more helpful to understand the insight of the technological strength of the bank yes so uh, we will make it uh, in the next presentation but as of now over 90% of the transactions are happening digitally 10% in the branch channels yes sir and uh, all the very best and uh, i've seen the progress of the bank under your leadership and your entire team so all the best to your team for the coming quarters thank you sir thank you manish thank you we have our next question from the line of amit kumar gupta from fintech capital please go ahead Yeah, I, I am I audible? Yes, Amit, you are very much audible. Okay. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, sir. Uh, I have uh, two questions. One is, uh, you know, we have seen a, a very uh, bad flood kind of a situation in Himachal and Uttarakhand. So I just wanted to understand, uh, uh, you know, how uh, is the situation of floods in Jammu and how much it will be the impact on the, you know, uh, business uh, as such. Uh, and my uh, second question is regarding the uh, divestment of the PNB metalized stake, which we have talked about in the last quarter as well. What is the progress on that, and uh, is there any valuation change on the on the matrix, and when we expect that to be completed? Thank you. Thank you, Amit. 
See, as far as flood situation is concerned, we do not see, we have not seen any flood-like situation in Jammu and Kashmir, and uh, so far there is no cause of worry, uh, and uh, we don't have much operations in Uttarakhand and uh, uh, Himachal also, so no impact of uh, floods or any sort of things uh, in our businesses. And uh, about the uh, divestment of uh, PNG metal life, as I have uh, covered during my uh, last quarter also, that is that that call we have not yet taken. That will be only the last thing we will be doing. <coughs> Hopefully this uh, this year we may not require it. So uh, uh, as of now, uh, I think uh, uh, this this we will think only in the next year. Uh, sir, uh, pardon my ignorance. Earlier uh, in the one of the con calls, it was decided that it would be done in uh, H1 FY24. Is there a change in the uh, timeline for that? Is, uh, as of now, we don't need it actually. So, uh, uh, so far the internet approvals are good and uh, there is no urgency for us to do that. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Sangeeta Purshottam from Kogaito. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, good morning and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Um, I have two questions primarily. One is relating to a previous comment you made about the ROE being, uh, you know, um, the ROE that you're comfortable being about 1%. Um, could you just clarify that is that for this figure? Or are you looking at that as like a medium-term target? And what kind of, therefore, ROE would the bank be able to generate? Um, that is one question. My second question is that given the resurgence in the economy of um, GMK, are you likely to see increased competitive activity from other banks entering the territory? And how are you positioned and how would you therefore maintain your um, you know, cost of funds, which has been a big advantage so far that it's been amongst the lowest in the country. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the first question is about ROA. When I'm talking of around 1% of ROA, that is applicable to this year. So uh, going forward, we will see how the business environment pan out. But in the long term, we will be looking to around 1.4 to 1.5% over the last three to four years. That is one. Another is about the competition, yes, because of the increased uh, activities in the UT, both for GNK and the DAC, competition is bound to happen. But before, for, for that, we have taken a, a good number of steps, including the branch expansion. Then we have a big strength, actually. Uh, we have all the employees with, who are local. And uh, they are well versed with the local culture. They are known to the local people, and they speak their language. And uh, uh, as, because of that, there is a strong building uh, that the brand building, the brand image is there for the bank. So generally, uh, our customers, they, despite the fact that the competition may come and lure our try and lure our customers, we are not much worried. But we are not complacent. Also, we are taking the proactive steps, ensuring that our business remains intact rather grows. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Gururaj Kalyan from KCMPL. <coughs> Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon and uh, congratulations for a wonderful set of numbers once more. Uh, I'm liking the trajectory I'm seeing of the bank for the last many quarters. Uh, but I just want to go back to a question we raised in the last uh, call, which was the, uh, the ESOP issue. Uh, that's the first of my questions to understand where it is now? Is it resolved? Is it still an open discussion? Uh, I'd appreciate an update on that. Sir. Yes, thank you, Gurudev. So, as as of uh, as of now, the ease of issue. See, this this quarter, uh, uh, we we, uh, we 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 have not counted that uh, amount of which we have raised in ESOP as like in the in our uh, uh, March quarter also. So whatever the uh, the ratios you are seeing is excluding of that amount. 
and uh, uh, these auditors uh, uh, they have raised this uh, question last quarter we have referred this matter to the regulatory authorities we are yet to get a response from that side from them but nobody has asked us to reverse that amount and pay back to the employees as of now okay sir thank you and the second question is uh, it's, it's heartening to hear that 4000 crores is your targeted profit number for fy28 uh, But is it at the PBT level or the PAT level, sir? That is, uh, we, we are talking about PAT. PAT level. Yes. Okay. And uh, the final question is: Please, JNK Bank has set a scorching rate of growth over the last multiple quarters. Uh, when will you see this trajectory peaking, sir? I mean, obviously we can't continue at this pace forever. And while I would like it to be true, uh, if I had to ask you, when do you see this kind of growth trajectory peaking? Uh, what would be your answer to that? See. Uh, the overall environment business environment in our home territory is improving and there is a further scope of improvement as i have told a uh, lot of uh, new steps the government has taken in this territory which uh, and then law and order has improved the accessibility of this area even the train connectivity is getting improved i mean all the business activities are seeing a very good uptick and we being the the major financial institution available in this uh, territory so obviously the maximum benefits are uh, is uh, is getting to jnk bank so as of now i think uh, we see that a, a, a good growth is expected but very difficult to say when it will peak out as of now mm. maybe definitely in the medium term we see that business uh, environment will continue improving Okay, so most of the gains so far have come from tremendous operational efficiency. Would that be would that be a right thing to say, sir? Enhancement of operational efficiency. Would that be a key trigger so far? Uh, you, are, you are talking about NIM. No, overall, if I look at the bank performance overall, yes. the key so, for the turnaround has been a dramatic improvement in operational efficiency. Would that be a correct statement? So that is one part. Another part is lot of work has been done on the governance levels. and then uh, the the steps we have taken in the technology also has uh, has a big contribution uh, to our overall improvement in the in the efficiency so on the revenue side uh, you're saying that the growth is going to come because uh, you're looking at the rest of india and you're looking at about 40% coming from the rest of india which de risks the government issue uh, and that is going to come more from corporate and garment corporations uh, would that be correct sir supported by housing and cost okay. thank you sir i i it's a great pleasure for me to look at these numbers makes me very happy and i wish all of you a lot of good luck to actual breakers for that thank you dhruvash thank you we have our next question from the line of preet nagar sheet from wealth finvisor please go ahead right um thank you for the opportunity Uh, so, sir, my question is: uh, first, it's a book of speaking question. What would be our book value after quarter one? Book value after quarter one. Quarter after the this quarter. After this quarter. Yeah. Uh, after Q one. Q one. After counting of ESP, around eight, uh, eighty-three. I think it should be eighty-three. Yes. Right. My my second question, sir, is that right now the capital markets are in a good space and uh, attracting a lot of investment. So would it not make better sense to prepone your plan to raise capital, the C T one capital, right in this environment rather than wait for say January, February, where the capital markets could be maybe in a different uh, space, a different sector? Good question, Preet. Actually, we have deliberated on this issue a lot. and uh, as of now number one uh, we are expecting good internal accrual that is one another thing is we do not want to divest below the book value so uh, that also is uh, that pricing is also a factor so uh, after i mean considering all these aspects we have taken a call that let us wait for some time yeah. so so then the uh, the uh, next question is regarding dividend uh do we see uh, uh any dividend starting and any kind of dividend policy being framed uh, going forward considering the growth that is coming in yes we have a dividend policy and the board uh, will take a call appropriately depending upon the performance of the bank last year we have given a dividend of uh, 50 paisa per share 
We have started it after so long years. Okay. And, but do we have any policy that states that a certain percentage of the profits will be distributed as dividends? Yes, we have the policy. I don't remember it exactly, but the policy is there in place. Right. So wonderful. Thank you so much, sir, and wish everyone all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Jatin from Invest Savvy Portfolio Management LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, we had two questions. One is that we've been seeing that credit costs till last quarter, there was actually a write back of around 175 crores, whereas this quarter there's been a provisioning and contingency of 75 crores. Now, going forward, how do you see these numbers uh, pan out for this year uh, as in the next few quarters? And the other thing was you mentioned that deposit growth uh, was lower because uh, money moves out, uh, government moves money out in Q1. So March there is it is cash parked and then it moves out in Q1. But on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, that phenomena would kind of even out. So how do you see that uh, and what is your view on that part? Yes. Thank you, Jatin, and good morning. So as far as credit cost is concerned, uh, we, we, uh, we are expecting it to be uh, below 1% uh, uh, during the entire year. And uh, this quarter, uh, it, it's still uh, in the negative only, less than zero. So uh, this, this quarter recoveries were little muted, and uh, they must be happening in the coming quarters. That is one. Another thing is that last quarter, uh, uh, means uh, uh, March quarter, we had a one-off entry of high fin, uh, where a uh, good amount of... 230 crore. 230 crore amount was recovered. So that that, uh, that was contributed to that uh, quarter's income. As far as deposits are concerned, uh, as I have already discussed, uh, besides, yes, our dependence is there on the government deposits, which will continue accruing to the bank because we are the agency bank for the government and all the government deposits are with us only. And the second will be that a lot of other steps we have taken, including the expansion plan, which will be supporting our liability franchise. And that, that will be happening in the state of U, in the UT of GNK and Ladakh, as well as in the rest of the country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Arjun Bagga from Baroda BNP Paribas Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity. So just uh, wanted to check with you. So uh, during the quarter, uh, advances growth exceeded uh, the uh, deposits growth, and that's the reason that CD ratio increased to 70%. So just wanted to check what kind of a number would we be com uh, comfortable with uh, incrementally, and what would be a number that we'll be looking at for a steady state? Uh the lever for lower CD ratio and short-term surplus also supplement our credit growth. So that is one point. And uh, uh, this, the growth which we have seen around 17% this quarter, we are likely to maintain the same level and we are uh, confident of meeting our guidance. Okay, sir. Uh, any any specific numbers if you were to give that uh, the 70% could go to what levels? Or... CD ratio... Uh, maybe maximum 72. Okay, so maximum would be 72%. Yes. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, just uh, a clarification regarding the cost to income ratio. So for this quarter, we were at 65%. So did I hear this correct that for the full year, we are expecting 60% and by FI26 or maybe next two, three years, we are expecting that to come to somewhere between 50-55%. Is that understanding correct? 50, yeah, you are uh, very much correct. We will be touching around 60% this year and yeah. then going forward around mid 50s okay okay sir okay and just uh, lastly on the uh, nim nim side so what kind of number are we looking at for the full year fi24 so nim, nim uh, guidance is 3.75 to 3.9 i think we will be in that range only 
this this quarter it is 3.98 but going forward let us see how the liability because we are expecting that some competition will be there in liabilities so uh, keeping that in the mind we are confident of meeting our new guidance that is 3.75 to 3.90 Sure, sir. Sure, sir. This is very helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Asha Rawal from Shubham Ventures. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Morning, ma'am. Uh, so my question is pertains to the borrowings. In this quarter, we we have seen sharp turns in the borrowing. So uh, I just wanted to know uh, in near term it will going to. Uh, remain the same or how do you see uh, the trend going forward borrowing uh, uh, this this quarter i think it will be around in the in the in this range only it will be flat only because we don't see uh, the need of borrowing because going forward this this quarter has been exceptional because uh, uh, the government funds have been withdrawn uh and but going forward we will see that the growth will be happening in deposits also and uh, we have a short term investment uh, of about 7000 crores in cds and treasury bills which will be uh, supporting us in the credit growth okay okay so borrowing will be limited only and then sir uh, i just wanted to know the how much uh, the percentage of the government in the uh, deposits and then contribute towards the deposits percentage of government in the deposits government yeah. deposits uh that, that is not readily available to me unfortunately yeah. we will email you we will email you oh, oh yeah thank you so do you see uh, the name pressure going forward in terms of cost of funds or like uh, yes your expansion the 25 branch in this year so uh, the cost of funds should i mean it should go from here on right i mean it can't be remain the same which we have seen in this quarter or like previous some quarter yes yes so no i fully agree with you and uh, that is what we are, we are saying that the nim should be around 3.75 to 3.90 in that range so we are also expecting the same trend as far as cost of deposits or cost of funds is concerned okay okay so okay thank you sir thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you we have a next question from the line of sonal kohli from bowhead please go ahead hello sir congratulations on good set of numbers i have a few questions sir firstly in 2023 was any one of the income or in any um, major cost item you know uh 2023 yes uh sonal good morning and can i give it to our cfo mr pratik yes sir so for sonal uh, uh in 2023 there were uh, three one of items one well, the first in terms of cost was the esps cost which is the discount given to the employees the second was uh, clearing the balance sheet with the intangible uh, to declare the dividend because that's a regulatory requirement and the third was uh, reversal of uh, uh, any an income item uh, uh, which was receivable from a corporation uh, because again for uh, regulatory reasons Sir, what was the quantum of these one-offs? Yeah. Total. So, so the intangible, the combined value was in the range of 150 crores. So the this will be suffer again this year or no? It's non-recurring in 24. So, no, no, that that won't recur. That won't recur. It was pure. That, that, yeah, that will not happen this year. So you're saying 150 crore difference uh, uh, would? Uh, I mean. Uh, if these recurring items, if I understood you correctly, these recurring items would not happen. Your PBT would have been higher by 150 crores. Is my understanding correct, or yeah. am I missing something? Yeah, yes, yeah, that is the correct understanding, Sonal. Uh, secondly, sir, you know, um, um, in terms of names, from a longer term perspective, you know, bearing let's say next one or two quarters, you know. uh where do you see the nim settling and what would be drivers of those and you know from a long term perspective you know what could be a loan to deposit ratio you said 7000 crore the deposit are maturing but at the same time you know investments are maturing at the same time you are maintaining the you know loan to deposit ratio will be 72 so this 72 is 20 you know 22 on 24 target or a medium term long term target 
And if this is not the long-term, medium-term target, where could we end up considering here? We are way lower than any other bank in the country. So long-term could be uh, around 75. This we are talking about. 72 we are talking about short-term target. And uh, this 7,000 crore is uh, we are expecting this year itself. So that itself would lead to a nice delta in your loan to deposit ratio. Yes, yes, that is a good lever with us. That's why your borrowing is, uh, will be muted on. And sir, uh, with your gross NP is coming down, logically speaking, based on whatever I understand, you you know you will have a nice delta in your names. But despite that, you are expecting a nice decline in names in spite of you know loan to deposit ratio increasing, leverage reducing because you are making healthy profits compared to the past, so your leverage ratio will also fall. So, uh, you know, uh, is, is this like a, a realistic target or are you being a little conservative? And what would be a medium term MIM target, you know, for you, considering increase in loan cost to deposit ratio and leverage and, you know, recoveries in, you know, NPS? Yeah, so Sonal, as I have uh, told last time also, we want to be a little conservative as far as name uh, is concerned, name percentage is concerned, because we have to just see how the, the deposit swap pans out in the future. That is the only concern in our mind. Uh, maybe cost of deposit is likely to go up uh, because of uh, the competition going up. We'll, uh, we'll have a better, uh, I think, clarity after Q2, as far as names are concerned. Understood, you. And sir, when you're talking about 4,000 crore profit estimate, you know, uh, you know, I am, and you, you are comparing it to 2023. Obviously, you know, 2023 was a low credit period, cost period. You know, so I have two questions here. So, you know, uh, what are likely to be credit costs in 2024-25? Are they likely to remain low, or you know, post 2024 they're likely to go up in 2025? So, what is the runway we have? Is it like six months? Is it like more like two years in terms of low credit costs? And when you are building 2028 estimates, are you taking similarly lower level of credit cost even in the future, or you are using a more normalized credit cost in those 4,000 crore estimates? Yes, yes. Uh, can you just like yes, yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Sonal. So I, I I like to answer that question. Credit cost we expect uh, in 28 uh, to be in the range of less than one percent around around that particular kind of thing. The key reasons are going to be growth in business, leveraging of uh, capital coming to our benefit, the long-term uh, capital plan and internal accruals and thereby strengthening the network. And NIMS, uh, we expect, because we are already conservative right now, we expect uh, to sustain them uh, based on the mathematical estimates that we have made. And the Sonal, the uh, one factor which will be uh, supporting us to achieve the target which we have taken will be the reduction in employee cost. As I covered in our opening remark, 1,500 employees uh, will be retiring uh, in the next three to four years, and all these are high-cost employees. And the, the, the employee cost as of now is 65%, and uh, the target is to below uh, 50%. Because of this factor, we will be able to achieve this. Uh, the other question I had was regarding the credit cost outlook for 24 and 25. You know, uh, uh, would it remain benign in these both the years, or the era of low credit cost is over for us? No, no, it, it will remain benign for this this year and in the next year also. We are expecting recoveries. Understood. Answer. Uh, and sir, are there any other levers like, you know, our, I see that our income is very low compared to other banks. Are we doing anything about it? Uh, you know, uh, and uh, I have actually three more questions. First is regarding other income, are we doing anything about it? You know, and, uh, you know, from a long term perspective, you know, is there, is there a strategic intent to increase it over a period of time? Uh, yes. You know, the second question was pertaining to the SMAs, both end of the quarter. And you know, um, mid month, which you normally share, uh, you know, uh, first two questions, and then I'll ask you the third one later. Yeah. So, uh, Sonal, other income, uh, we have taken a lot of steps, particularly relating to cross selling income, improving the cross selling income. In the last year, we had three tie-ups, new tie-ups, uh, with various other companies, and uh, this year, those tie-ups will be delivering us uh, some income, which will be over and above which we have earned last year. 
then the the subsidiary which we have jkbfsl uh, that is uh, uh, that is not fully leveraged as of now we have taken uh, this year a target to leverage that subsidiary fully and improving our other income then government receipts uh, both in in the ladakh as well as in uh, our jnk uh, as of now nothing much is coming in the government receipt is likely to improve during this year we have taken steps in that and we are leveraging the technology for that the second question was relating to sme sme yeah sir sme is both end of the quarter and mid month yes so sma uh, suja can you yes sir yes sir yes. good morning dear yes as sme is at the end of the quarter at the end of the month i should say uh, we have seen uh, we are seeing some in, uh, inflated figures but as compared to the last year if you see september 22 figure our total sma as on uh, that was 28000 crores but if you see the march figure you can see it's complete reversal we had uh, sma 1 and 2 of just 5300 crores same is the position as of june it was 5367 and if you see it today it's around 3000 crores only which yes. is less than 5% so now the uh, we have worked hard as far as slippages are concerned hardly any slippages are happening now now sma is the next target so sma 1 and sma 2 uh, you will find a lot of improvement in this quarter understood and sir uh, regarding uh, in doing all these activities regarding the bank you know uh, whether it is your employee cost or whether it's your other income or technology or many other initiatives which you may be taking which you know you may not be aware about are you hiring any outside consultants or it's all being done in house only so as far as this employee cost is concerned and the manpower assessment area we have hired a consultant which is big four and they are on the job and maybe the picture will be clear in a quarter or so and we have uh, for any other initiative have you hired a consultant yeah so uh, other consultant uh, we have hired that's the been a big four for the impact of ecl likely impact of ecl uh, as per index and uh, that work is also in process great sir and sir in addition to these employees retiring uh, could there be any other levers for reducing employee costs like technology or you know uh, anything else in the future yeah yes, yes so all of it are on the table as of now because of that only this consultant is working with us so uh, this is apparently very clear to us even before consultant that this 1500 employees are retiring all these are high cost employees so that i have already covered then with the recommendations of the consultant we will take in the steps to improve upon that so do you expect significant uh, improvement in this ratio uh, you know beyond fi 24 as well like in next 3 4 years like for your 28 target so now it will be difficult for me to say on this today maybe next quarter things will be clear once we have the recommendations of consultant ready with us great thank you so much sir. thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of gaurav agrawal from 91 capital please go ahead uh, hello sir thank you for the opportunity sir g quarter back we had this problem of technical slippages and you gave some reason that you were upgrading your it systems etc because of which uh, you know the accounts became uh, npa temporarily and while you re- were able to recover them in that same quarter uh, sir can you elaborate a bit more on the, what happened exactly with those accounts what is the status of those accounts now and uh, <clears throat> and if you can also share you know whether those uh, issues are behind us and what gives you confidence that those kind of issues will not arise again yes thank you gaurav uh, and very good question i am um, see we had migrated the platform itself the core banking platform itself which was overdue we have done it last year and after that uh, the normal banking operations were not a problem but because uh, of this new software upload uh, no new software upgradation the slippages were happening 
there was some patch which was working in the earlier software which uh, which was not operating in the new software which we find out with the support of our technology team and that has been fixed now and that is a thing of past and because of that only you are seeing that we are uh, now in full control of slippages we had 100 182 200, one, 200. 280, 282 crores of 1.5% so uh, this is the thing of past now and in future we don't foresee any such problem which is beyond our control. Oh, okay. Uh, sir, in terms of your uh, Philippines guidance, uh, I joined the call a bit later. So can you please help me if you have given any guidance on the Philippines part for FY24, the whole of FY24? Q1 was very good. Yes. So we will be in the, in the similar range, less than 2%. So in terms of absolute figures, it was like 280 crore. So we expect somewhere around 300 CR kind of person which is on a quarterly basis. So, Just uh, not more than that. Yes, uh, three, exactly. Less, 300 crores per. Uh, maximum 300 that's the max, crores. Max, max. Maximum 300 crores per quarter. You can uh, think expect. We can we can guide you, sir. It has been not been been more than 30 crores during this month for 24 days that have gone by. Sure. And sir, on the restructured book, you have around 1,000 crore of restructured book, uh, which is non-NPA, which is kind of standard. Uh, how is the track record on that book? How is the recovery so far? Uh, how much of it is has come out of moratorium? How much of it is you know, paying you currently? If you can share any statistics on this 1,000 crore of so restructured standard assets, uh, would be helpful for us to understand your NPA trajectory. Yes, so as far as the structure book is concerned, can you share me the data? So we have a restructured book of... Uh, yeah, 2200 crore, of which I think 1000 odd crore is NPA. So, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, which is provided for to the action of 78%. So uh, uh, one is that the restructured book is holding well. There are no further slippages. This quarter we had a recovery of 142 crores out of that book. So uh, there are recoveries happening now. And given uh, the business environment which is improving in the overall uh, our area of operation, so these accounts will be performing, will become performing, and this book is likely to go further down during this year. Okay, and anything on the recovery part, uh, how much of these, you know, with the accounts which are supposed to pay of this 1000 crore, out of that, how much are paying you regularly? Uh, there, there, there has been no slippage, there has been addition of only... Uh, the... You have any figures? Yes, sir, yes, sir. sir it's, recoveries are forthcoming as far as NCH, uh, these repayment schedules and the structured uh, uh, terms and conditions. And during the next two quarters, we are hopeful of uh, upgrading 400 crores out of this, which are fully provided for, and we will unlock that provision and uh, the 100% provision. So for, uh, as of now, the structured book is, is not a concern for us. Maybe sir, I think it's offline. And uh, the last question is... Uh, uh, Mr. Agrawal, uh, you know, I request you to yeah. join back the queue, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you all the participants for joining in today in our conference call. For any further questions or queries or details and comments or anything else which you want, the team is always available. And you can also direct your queries to our investor relations desk and we will be definitely respond. Thank you. Have a nice day.